You know why I pulled you over? Depends on how long you were following me. Eesh. Why don't we just take it from the top? Here goes. I sped. I followed too closely. I ran a stop sign. I almost hit a Chevy. I sped some more. I failed to yield at a crosswalk. I changed lanes in the intersection. I changed lanes without signaling while running a red light and speeding. Is that all? No. I have unpaid parking tickets. Be gentle. That was a funny clip from the movie Liar Liar. But in all seriousness, we Angelinos have a big problem with the parking enforcement of Los Angeles. Now I've been watching these guys for many, many years. And I started this documentary film back in 2005 simply because I was sick and tired of the lies, corruption, and the abuse of these parking enforcement officers, meter maids, tax collection officers, whatever you want to call them. So I decided to finally do something about it. As I was filming, I started to realize that the city of Los Angeles have been systematically taking away much of our free parking and replacing them with red zones and putting signs telling you can't park here during these hours. And as I was digging through my archives, I found an investigative news report from 1997 where the then Mayor Richard Reardon was asking the parking enforcement to increase writing tickets 10 to 13 percent in the hopes of collecting more money for his hundred million dollar budget shortfall. He also asked him to find ways to create more money and suggested putting in red zones where free parking was, putting in parking meters in places that never had them before, etc. Now this got me to start thinking that we as Angelinos, Californians, and Americans have a civil duty to watch and control our government. So I did not want to just make another documentary film outlining the problem, but I wanted one in which we could come up with the solution. So my goal is to sit down with the mayor and the head of the parking enforcement and show them this video and let's come up with a solution that works for us all, but a solution that includes we the people, not just them. If we do not do anything about this, it will continue just like it is and get even more and more out of control. So let's stand up together and fight. Please journey with me as I take you through parking tyranny. What's up, honey? Make sure you get him in the red, too. Yeah, I want to get you a smile. You're going to be on the movie. The parking meter came from the mine and at the request of Carl C. McGee, who was chairman of a traffic committee of the Oklahoma City of Chamber of Commerce in 1933, ironically the same year that America declared its bankruptcy. The reason for this request came because in spite of enforcement efforts, nearly 80% of cars parked in the downtown streets of Oklahoma parked there all day long without moving. And as a result, store owners experienced declining sales, complained, and that concerned the chamber. So Mr. McGee and professors from Oklahoma State College offered $500 in prizes to engineering students who could help develop a working mechanical timing device. Holger Thusen and Gerald Hale 
designed the first working parking meter and called it the Black Maria in 1935. Thusen and Hale were engineering professors at Oklahoma State and began working on the parking meter actually in 1933. On July 16, 1935, the world's first parking meters were installed in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 150 of them in all. For five cents a car could park for one hour and of course at the end of that hour a red flag would pop up enabling parking enforcement officers to easily determine who was in violation encouraging turnover. It was soon realized that the parking meters could be not only to provide parking turnover but also to set aside funds for all street parking spaces. The money made from it could be collected and used for all street parking lots. It was an ideal solution. But the new parking meter system started being challenged in court many times and for many, many years and are considered legal if the meters are used for purposes of parking regulation and not for revenue purposes. In a 1937 case in Oklahoma, H.E. Duncan contended that the ordinance imposed a fee for the free use of the streets, which is a right of all citizens of the state. The courts ruled that free use of the streets is not an absolute right, but agreed with an unpublished 1936 Florida court decision that said, if it had been shown that the streets on which parking meters have been installed under this ordinance are not streets where the traffic is sufficiently heavy to require any parking regulation of this sort, or that the city was making inordinate and unjustified profits by means of the parking meters and was resorting to their use not for regulatory purposes but for revenue only, there might have been a different judgment. The very first parking meter ticket resulted in the first court challenge to meter parking enforcement. Reverend C.H. North of Oklahoma City had his citation dismissed when he claimed he had gone to a grocery store to get change for that meter. As of January 2011, there was still an active lawsuit going on in Chicago, Illinois over parking meters. The first city in California to use parking meters was Long Beach in November 1936. San Diego tried them in 1941 and most cities installed them after World War II. Before then, most retail centers were located in central business districts that were very well served by trolleys. But in the post-war period, suburbs developed and the privately operated trolleys no longer were financially viable to serve these suburban shopping centers. So shoppers started arriving by cars and using all available curb space. As a result, the use of parking meters became popular in retail districts after World War II. Despite the benefits, they were controversial at first. In 1940, 1942, and 1946, parking meters were defeated in L.A. The legal issue came into play again. Opponents questioned the moral right to rent our city streets financed by taxes and owned by the public at large. However, the opposition was overcome and the first meters were installed along Lancashire Boulevard and Magnolia Boulevard in the North Hollywood community in June of 1949. Later that year, they were installed in the Van Nuys community. They became quite popular and grew from 1,800 meters in 1949 to 27,000 meters in 1977, and today over 49,000 meters are in Los Angeles, California. All right, I'm here on the corner of Poinsettia and Merrill's. This is the scene in which I got a parking ticket back in June of 2007, and I want to explain everything what happened here. This is the actual copy of the ticket that I got back then. And what they did was they mailed it to me. They never actually physically gave me or put it on my car. And this is what they said. The enclosed parking citation has been issued to your vehicle because your vehicle was driven away before the officer was able to physically attach the citation to your vehicle at the time the citation was issued. This copy is being forwarded to you in accordance with California Vehicle Code Section 40202D. And what really upset me about this was, in the comments, this guy writes, I was in violation of Red Zone, $70 comments 100% in red good paint at corner 
traffic hazard, UA, NA driveway, whatever that means. That's an absolute lie. Okay, and I'm going to take you over to the spot in a second and show you exactly how I got the ticket and what happened and why I shouldn't have gotten the ticket. So, my whole point to this is to show you the abuse of power by these so-called parking officers, all right? And Channel 4 did an investigative report in which they showed some officer's conduct. They were soliciting prostitutes while on duty and stealing stuff out of grocery stores, but they were never reprimanded or fired or punished for it. And that's my whole point. That's not my, or that's not my focal point, but it's to show you a point of conduct that these officers are doing, you know, and getting away with. So let's walk over and let's take a look at the exact place that, uh, that I'm talking about. So I'm here on Melrose and Poinsettia. And this is what I want to show you. Exactly how this gentleman is parked or he pulled over is exactly what I did. Except I didn't leave the car and come to the ATM like he did. As you can see, he's in the red zone. In front of the car that he's in, that he just took off. See, there's enough space there for one more spot. And it's like, there's an ATM here. You gotta designate, or should, a spot for that ATM. And when you look at the whole red curve, it's too much. That's the whole point in LA is that we don't have enough parking. It's like, there's no need for all this to be a red curve. And you can even see down here that this was once all red, and then they put in two meters right here, or whatever, before, then they put the, the other red here, and it goes all the way down. And there's a bus stop there. You see the seats. You may can't see the sign, but anyway. So what, what I did was, just like that gentleman, I parked right in the front and pulled up here. And I was arguing with the person I was with about money or something, and I was like, all right, there's an ATM right there. So I'll just go in front of the, you know, go get the money, whatever, so we're talking. So while we're talking, I notice a parking enforcer riding on a bicycle comes riding by right here, and he didn't say anything to me, roll right by me, and I didn't say anything to him. And a week later, I get the ticket in the mail. And, you know, it's so unfair. And, you know, I paid $70 for that ticket, and I want my money back. There's a copy of that ticket. This is the problem that I have and the question that I want to propose to the city of LA. Is this legal? Why are they harassing us when we're not blocking traffic? And, you know, that's my whole point, is to find out what's going on. And then right here, the bus, as you see, pulls up, he's not at the actual bus stop. Well, yes he is, he's letting people off. You see how much space that bus has to pull over? There's no need for all of this to be red. So I want the city to explain to me why they're wasting all of this space when we have so many cars on the road and then we need parking. I'm not the only one that has complaints. They're all over the internet. This is not just an LA problem, but this is an issue that's worldwide. And of course, all across America. Whether you be in Seattle, Washington, Chicago, Illinois, New York, New York, San Francisco, Atlanta, Georgia, it's all the same complaints about abuse and corruption. There's even an organization in LA that's called Slappy C, and they help people by having them post their problems to their website, and they try to give you the best solution. Well, you knew this would eventually make it to reality TV. There's even a show now that airs on arts and entertainment called Parking Wars. Here's a little clip of it right here. See, I around you right here. Why do you think that you can stop and leave traffic? This is crazy. I'm not a satisfied customer.
Now what is starting to happen is an escalation between parking officers and citizens because when citizens start yelling at them for getting a ticket, they write what is called revenge tickets. And I have to tell you, I'm surprised that none of these officers have been seriously hurt or even like shot at. And I'm not for one minute advocating that. I'm just saying. And we ought to start doing what they do in other states, and that is arrest these officers when they're writing false and fake tickets. Up next, I have a clip that I found on YouTube that I thought was pretty funny. It was a parking officer in L.A. getting the boot by a citizen. You're illegally parked. Now the happy April Fool's Day. The joke's on you, huh? Come on, guys. This is taxpayers' money, you know? It's okay. It's April Fool's Day. Come on. Yeah, it's April Fool's Day. Come on. It's April Fool's Day. It's April Fool's Day. It's So, uh, some dude bit in his car. Somebody did it. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Now I need you to bear with me for a few moments while I go over the detailed problems of the red zones and what I'm trying to explain to you. This is the Macy's Plaza in downtown LA on Hope Street in between 8th and 7th. Now you see all this red zone here? Why does this all need to be red? You can get at least 10 cars, maybe more there. And right there is the Sheraton Hotel and you see taxis parked there on the side. They're not blocking traffic whatsoever. You see this car going by. He'd have the same amount of space over there. If the city gave this to us as parking. And that's what I want to ask them. Who determines these red zones and so forth? Who makes that decision? Here is uh, off of Wilshire on New Hampshire Street. And what I believe is going on is you see this big tree here? I think that what's happening is that the roots are coming up so high that they can't dig the meter and put them in there because those roots are really big and deep. And it should just be parking, free parking because you see cars in front of there and in the back you absolutely are blocking no traffic I've sat there and done it myself and I've watched people uh, park there picking up their loved ones or friends or whatever from school and from work and the city should let us park there for free for those two hours from 8 to 6 p.m. and then after 6 p.m. just let us have it for free what's the big deal and I've seen parking officers over there harassing people who sit over there and park over there it's really unfair. It's just wasted space. This is in, uh, down at LAX off of a street called Vicksburg Avenue and 98th Street. Now down here, parking is so wide open that it's unbelievable. And what do they have? Red zones. Now the street does indentation gets a little narrow right there, but then it widens back up. So give us the parking once it widens back up. And they do. And you see some cars there but they can only park on that side of the street for two hours so why why only two hours and on the other side of the street down the street it's even more wide open it's unbelievable how much free parking there is and it's all open there's no red zones only like the fire hydrants or what have you and the other side it's even more wide open because there's an indentation over there where the cars would really be off the street and not blocking traffic but here's the catch 
you can only park there once again for two hours and from the hours of 1 30 a.m. to 6 a.m. you can't park there because they'll tow you away why what I think is going on is there's some type of uh, monopoly or agreement with the parking lots down there and the city they don't want people parking for free something like that I don't know but I plan to ask here is the UPS complex in downtown LA now I have parked in this area for years because I live in the area and just showing you here there's cars parked over across the street right there you see on the same side but that one little section there they have it red why you can get one or two cars there over here is the other side and once again there's a one hour parking now there's a lot of residents that live in this area and we could use this space for free parking and I just don't understand because it never gets busy down there now here's a little warehouse thing I'm not sure if it's in use or not but still there's not much traffic I don't think it's being used because I don't see cars or trucks coming in and out of that warehouse or anything but that's all parking that we could use and over here in front of the complex again or on the other side is a lot of red zone that they could have for free parking this is already free parking where you see the big truck back and those are just wasted spaces right there and like I said there's residents in the area we could really use those extra few spots and there's some red over there on the other side too in front of that warehouse that I was telling you about and right here this video was taken in 2007 on James M. Wood now this used to all be free parking over here on this side and they recently came and changed and put up signs there stating that you can't park there from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. now you see how clean the streets are because they come out and they clean the city like once a month but this was all free parking and they took it away and I'm going to show you that in a few moments and then once again this is the free parking over here now they do have a parking lot for the UPS employees but um, you know I don't know why they have that open free parking but it's just extra parking that they had in the area now I'm going over here to this cul-de-sac because I started parking down here in 2005 when I lived nearby and this cul-de-sac used to be all free parking and then sometime I believe in early 2006 or somewhere around there late 2005 they came the city did and put signs up where you couldn't park there anymore it's tow away and I don't understand why and I remember cars being parked over there because I'm sure people are so used to parking there or were so used to it for years or whatever they parked over there and I remember seeing tickets on their cars because I'm sure they just didn't even pay attention to the signs and now it's just a bunch of trash from you know homeless and people going over there partying and drinking and or whatever and it was never like that before when people were parking there there just wasn't a lot of trash around so just you know showing you this because as I told you I've been filming since about 2005 um, on this documentary you know movie and just showing you again you know all the trash around there now here are the signs now I was actually present the day the gentleman was putting them up and I asked him hey what's going on and he said you know the city you know my job told me to come over and put these signs up no parking signs in this area and this was done in March of 2010 because I was there that day now why why all this free area of parking it doesn't bother anything so that's my question why do they need to take this away maybe it has something to do with the LA Live back there and once again they don't want people parking for free to support or to make you have to pay at the parking lots I don't know but you know that's what I'm trying to do in this documentary is show you this is repeated throughout Los Angeles all over you know I, I'm just showing you a little bit you know I can't spend three hours showing you everywhere but I hope this serves the purpose of showing you what I'm talking about and 
this little clip right here is just kind of funny. There was a meter there, or they're putting a meter there. It's red, but they have the space there for parking a car. So what's the deal? I just thought it was kind of funny to add that clip in there because <laughs> it's like, what's up? Have you ever noticed these FedEx trucks with tickets on them? Well, I have. And I decided to ask one of the drivers, hey, why do you guys always get tickets when you're just making deliveries? And this is what he told me. He said that this, they can get like exemptions for, let's say, example, a million dollars a year to park like that without getting tickets. Well, they soon discovered that if they just went ahead and paid the tickets, that they were spending about a half million dollars a year. So, you know, from that perspective, it's cheaper just to pay the tickets than to get the exemption. And then I started thinking, now, these guys aren't blocking traffic or anything. They're just making deliveries. Why is the city hassling them? And I started to realize, now, wait a minute. I see police cars and mail trucks parked just like, you know, the UPS and FedEx delivery trucks, but they don't get tickets. And people say, well, yeah, of course not, because they're part of the city and the government. I understand that. But if it's blocking traffic or uh, nuisance, why are they allowed to park there? They should be able to follow the same rules that we all have to, right? And when I park like that, this is what they told me. They sent me the code. Los Angeles Municipal Code Section 80.56E4 Time limits for all zones states. No person shall stop, stand, or park a vehicle at any time in any red no stopping zone or portion of street posted with signs reading no stopping any time. Except that a bus may stop in such zone or portion of street marked or sign posted as a bus stop. Police cars and mail trucks aren't buses so they're not exempt then and please understand I don't have a problem with them parking there okay it's just be fair to the delivery trucks and don't give them tickets and I understand if they're you know doing a, their duty or their job I, I understand that that's no problem now this scene I found to be really funny UPS truck is in the right place in the yellow zone and the mail truck is behind him by a fire hydrant red but the UPS guy gets the ticket. Come on. This is what I'm talking about. Now, I don't know if these delivery companies are fighting with the city and saying, hey, look, we're just operating and doing business. Why do you guys have to harass us and give us tickets? I don't know if they're trying to fight it or not, but I just think it's really ridiculous. Well, up next, I got a clip from that news investigative report that I was talking about from 1997. Tonight, our special troubleshooter investigation called Parking Hell. You're about to see exclusive information from behind the closed doors of the L.A. City Parking Ticket Department. Judd McElveen joins us now with some information that uh, might get your blood to boiling. I it's got yours boiling. It really does, Mike. Now, this whistleblower is a manager, believe it or not, inside the department. Jay Carsman's his name. He apologized to me for lying when he was a spokesman for the department about quotas and pressures on officers to write parking tickets. He says he must now tell the truth of what's really going on. This breach guard is loading thousands of dollars in parking meter money. Can't film. Go ahead and film, please. Don't film. Go film. I'm telling you not to film. The city is touchy about you seeing its parking revenue, but the big money for the city is in the parking ticket fines. This is Jay Carsman, a 24-year veteran with the city of L.A. For 15 years, he's been in the parking ticket department. Carsman says the city doesn't want you to know that they are pressuring traffic enforcement officers to write more tickets to make money for the mayor's budget shortfalls. He says someone must tell the truth about what's going on. Mr. Carsman, why are you doing this? It's time to step forward and tell the truth. This department is out of control, and I'm tired of lying and covering up what we're doing. Mayor Richard Reardon says in this letter that his city budget is $100 million short. The mayor sent this letter to the Parking Ticket Administration. He wants traffic enforcement officers to give you 10 to 13% more tickets. Michael Inouye is the Parking Administrator. 
He's the whistleblower Carsman's boss. Inouye estimates that his parking department can take in $30 million more in ticket fines than last year. Remember, Carsman says there is a quota. Do you have ticket quotas here in your department? If you mean uh, a specified number of tickets per officer, the answer is absolutely not. It appears from your, your very own document that you're promising the mayor $90 million for his budget. And here on this project review it says you're going to have to collect 227,815 tickets a month to meet this goal in nine months. Is that not a quota? No, that's uh, an estimate by staff. Uh, if we're going to meet our revenue goals, uh, how many tickets we would have to write in a month. It's more than a quota. It's written in the city budget that this Department of Transportation, Office of Parking Management, is going to generate a certain amount of money. And God help us if we don't. So it's stronger than a quota. It's our necks are right on the line if we don't do it. So I say quota is hardly the word to even describe it. I'd say the organization is totally revenue driven. The public service side is secondary. Management's major goal is to try to make the traffic officers something like tax collectors to generate revenue. The city council just increased all parking fines. A $20 meter parking ticket jumps to $30, and the new late charge is $60. Bucks. In a way, wants more traffic officers in the field to write more tickets. Some write in the neighborhood of 100 tickets. Um, we need to get all of our productive resources out into the field. In a way, held a staff meeting trying to find more ways to write you a parking ticket. This memo shows their suggestions. Write more tickets by putting blue handicap curbs in residential areas. Put parking meters in front of homes in residential areas. And add more parking meters where parking is now free. Carsman says over the past 12 years, if you overpaid on your tickets, the city wouldn't tell you they just keep the money. Another little secret that Carsman says the public should know is the red curb trick. Well, I'll tell you one thing that we found out in the adjudication program is people park their cars and then the crews come along and paint the curb red. And it wasn't red when they parked there. We dismissed those tickets. His fellow employees fear that the city will fire carsmen for speaking out. I think they'd like to, but I don't think they can. I'm a civil service employee. I'm telling you the truth. And there's the First Amendment to the United States Constitution that grants me freedom of speech. Carsman says still working for the city and he'll be back to work Monday morning. That ought to be a very interesting Monday morning. Now, parking administrator, in a way, his boss says he is now going to investigate Carsman and for his actions. Oh. Investigate him for telling the truth. Well, they're going to investigate him for a lot of things. Yeah, I'm sure they will now. That was fascinating. Really I was. hope there's a follow-up coming. But I know one thing, they're not going to put parking meters in the mayor's neighborhood. I, I understand. <laughs> uh, that's, goes without saying, Joe. There are a few other areas that the city, parking enforcement, and the state have to work on, and I just want to touch on a couple of them really quick here. One being that of the handicap placards. Now, I believe that the reason why many people are abusing them is simply because they're also tired of the parking enforcement corruption and lies and false tickets that are being written. And in California, the laws are very lax on obtaining those handicap placards. So that's what people are doing to avoid having to deal with them. Now I personally have had one, legally of course, and they do save you a lot of time and money. So the cities and the state need to, I believe, once again, deal with the issue by confronting these parking enforcement officers and trying to find ways to relax parking and relieve parking in the cities and the state. Now I know two wrongs don't make a right, 
and those spots are reserved for those people who really need them so you know let's respect that and you know let the people that need those spots the most have them like it should be next area I want to touch on real quickly is that of the street cleaning issue now I've watched these trucks come by for years and I don't feel like they clean up much of anything I've actually seen them leave more garbage behind than they supposedly cleaned up I really believe that if business owners and residents who lives in these areas that have street cleaning would simply come together as a community and go to the city and say look we don't want these street cleaning trucks in our neighborhoods anymore we want to be responsible for cleaning up the garbage I really believe that that be a more viable solution I have a really good friend who's a native Angelino and he told me that it was under Mayor Tom Bradley's administration that started all of this pressuring of the parking enforcement and the officers for writing us more tickets and increasing the price of tickets and finding more ways to make money for the city and I showed you that in 1985 how the parking enforcement took over from the police department and how their revenue increased five times well that leads me you know to conclude that what he was saying was very valid this documentary was done by a USC student by the name of Matt Schroeder and I believe he interned for a summer at Channel 4 and simply what he wanted to show you in his documentary was that the street cleaning trucks were not coming by but yet the parking officers were writing hefty tickets I don't know if that problem has ever been resolved you know since he's done his documentary but he did his not too far from where I live in my neighborhood in the downtown area and let me tell you I did the same thing and what I found out was that my area is really trashy as you can see in this video and the parking officer and the truck driver of the street cleaning truck noticed that I was filming so they were on their best guard that day not only did he clean the street once he went up and down three times and you know I'm like well hey that's what he's supposed to do right and the city's not out just trying to make money off of giving people tickets and they're really trying to clean the streets and I don't have a problem with it up next I want to show you the video that caused parking enforcement chief Jimmy Price to step down because of the controversy and the outrageous conduct of some of his parking officers they wear the badge and they promise to uphold a strict code of ethics but confidential city files we've obtained tell a very different story about numerous about numerous LA traffic officers do you have an anger management problem no sir Please. we got a look inside the confidential file of officer Manuel Frias according to this 2008 memo Frias punched a motorist, James Langle. He says he yelled at Frias. I said, are you crazy? Because the officer was blocking traffic on busy Beverly Glen Boulevard while chatting with another officer. He came up to my window, put his head inside, and took his fist and punched me in my, in my uh, left shoulder. Can you tell me why you punched a motorist who didn't even lay a finger on you? I didn't punch anybody, sir. I don't know what you're talking about. Just three months later, according to another memo, Frias got violent during an argument with his supervisors. A sergeant observed him yelling and throwing a heavy steel padlock toward another sergeant. And you threw a lock at one of your co-workers? Oh, please, oh, come on. Where do you guys get this from? We got it from Transportation Department memos, where the department's own personnel director suggested firing Officer Frias. But Frias was allowed to keep his job. They pretty much just sweep it under the rug. These are some of the seven insiders who tell us there are numerous L.A. traffic cops who've committed crimes or other misconduct and haven't been disciplined. It isn't a few bad apples. There are a lot of bad apples in the bottle. We found three cases of traffic cops convicted of soliciting prostitutes. Officer David Delatore was arrested while he was on duty and pled no contest. You solicited a prostitute in uniform? I've got nothing to say to you. But sources tell us Delatore was not disciplined. Amir Sadati is acting head of the LA Transportation Department. Are you confident that officers who commit crimes or misconduct, and it's proven, are always properly disciplined? Um, I can't confidently say that. Like in the case of traffic officer Donald Brooks, 
charged with shoplifting from this Macy's in West L.A. last November. Sources say when he was convicted, his superiors didn't discipline him. And they say he wasn't disciplined either when he was arrested two months later at this supermarket, where security cameras caught him shoplifting food and beer. This was a black eye for the entire department. And who's to blame? All these insiders point to parking enforcement chief Jimmy Price, who they say makes the final decisions on discipline. Officers get away with almost everything because the chief does not promote discipline. Chief Price wouldn't talk to us for this story, but his boss promised us things are going to change in L.A. parking enforcement. It seems Chief Price is sweeping a lot of these cases under the rug without giving the proper discipline. Um, I, I hope that's not the case, but, you know, again, we, we are, uh, if you provide us some additional information, Joel, I will be happy to fully investigate. And we have now learned exclusively that Chief Jimmy Price is stepping down on June 4th, several years before his planned retirement. We learned that from multiple high-level sources inside the Department of Transportation. Price is officially retiring, but sources say he's being forced out because of the two NBC 4LA investigations and a scathing audit of his agency last week by the city controller. And finally, as for the officers in our story, the department said it cannot comment on their cases because personnel matters are... Mayor Vero Goso, along with the LA City Council, just approved adding 50 more parking officers and raised the price of parking fines again, all because they're claiming that they are losing millions and millions of dollars in unpaid parking fines, probably because people are sick and tired of the corrupt and unjust way that they're getting these tickets, and they're just overpriced. They cost too much. There's just not enough free parking in LA anymore. Well, Wendy Gruel, who is LA's city controller and who is running for mayor, did the audit and is leading the march to get us to pay these unpaid parking fines. And Kevin James, who is also running for mayor, says that this is all bad for business because people who get those tickets in business shopping areas, they just don't come back anymore. And he vows that if he wins and is elected mayor, he is going to clean up this whole situation with parking fines and reform it. And I certainly hope that he does, and I want to be there and watch if he really truly sticks to his word and does that. This is a statistic that I found from Minnesota that just says that there are 10,020 parking officers in the U.S. and that by 2019 it's going to drop by 10. I certainly hope so because I don't want to see more of these guys out on our streets. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention the confusing street signs. Can you understand what they're trying to tell you? I sure can't, and I've been doing this stuff for a while. You need a degree in street sign reading in order to understand. And I think it's all by design, of course. And in West L.A., it's even worse. Also, too, have you noticed that they've changed the times of the parking from like 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. in most places? And then even on Sundays now, where it used to be free, you have to pay from like 11 to 6 or 11 to 8. How unfair is that? Sundays are our family time. We shouldn't have to pay for parking like it's been all these years. It's just another hurdle that we have to jump over and complain about to the city. Now, I know I've been very harsh and critical of the parking enforcement officers and parking enforcement as a whole. And it's for a reason. Now they do have a valid purpose and function in the city. It's just a very small one, in my opinion. Like when the traffic light goes out and they need to direct the traffic or there's a parade or some type of function going on and you know they have to control the traffic and so forth, that's fine. And I even support them when it comes time for rush hour on busy streets. 
and they have to, you know, tow the cars off those streets at certain hours because it's just too busy and they need all available lanes. I just wish that the price of the ticketing and the towing wasn't so costly, just enough to be able to, you know, teach the people, you know, a lesson to pay attention at that very important time of the day when they need to keep the lanes open. Okay, I started the initiation of contacting the parking enforcement and I made contact with a gentleman by the name of Bruce L. Gilman, Communications Director of LA DOT, Los Angeles Department of Transportation. Here's the email that he sent me. Meeting about parking enforcement officers and citation writings. Mr. Pratik, thank you for taking the time to contact the Department of Transportation regarding parking enforcement operations as they relate to traffic citation issuance. Please respond back with exactly what you would like to do. My understanding is that you have been filming parking enforcement officers since 2005 and would like to make a documentary with the footage. Question mark. You stated on the phone you would like to show the footage and ask some questions of a parking enforcement manager on camera. I am passing along your contact info to Sergeant Kimmy Porter in our parking enforcement offices. Please respond to this email with the questions you would like to ask, preferred date, time to meet, and we will try to accommodate your request for a meeting. Please be advised, as we discussed in detail, I cannot guarantee an employee will agree to be filmed while answering your questions. Thank you again, Bruce. So, there we have it. And this was actually, I received this about six days ago. And I responded the next day, which I'm going to read to you in a moment. Um, and I still haven't heard from them yet. So let's see how long it takes them to respond to see if they'll actually have someone sit down and talk to me about what's going on. Here's my response to Bruce and what I mailed or emailed back to him. Bruce, thank you so much for your very quick response. And yes, I would like to sit down, show and discuss some issues with parking enforcement that I have documented over the years for a documentary film that I'm working on. As a citizen, I have questions and suggestions for the parking enforcement. The main thing is a strict code of conduct that we Angelinos don't feel that LA parking enforcement officers are following. What they can and cannot do while issuing parking tickets. Then I have questions for DOT, Department of Transportation, such as who decides where red zones go, new parking meters, and no parking signs, etc. And I would like to do all of this while filming the person I am talking to. Whoever is willing to do this with me is fine, but I do have a request for one person if possible, Amir Sadati. As for the date time I would like to do this, it's all up to you. I'm ready now, just I need to let my camera person know as much in advance as I can. So if you say tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., that may not be enough time. So a few days to a week in advance is good. But if the person who is willing to talk to me wants or has to do the on-camera interview with me right away, I will try my best to accommodate that. Thanks, Kevin Perti. So let's see how many days it takes for them to respond. It's already been five days, so. That's it. Here I am at the uh, parking enforcement headquarters in downtown LA. Uh, I sent the email to the parking enforcement or LA DOT and they responded as I showed you in my movie. And then they agreed to meet with me. Some people wanted to meet with me and hear what I had to show them about my film and my complaints or what have you. The meeting overall went I think well, they wouldn't allow us to film. Um, they asked us not to film if we could not film on this initially so we can get to know each other and find out what, what everybody's talking about or what have you. So I agree. And uh, it went overall pretty well. There were some points made. Um, they pretty much had an answer for everything that I had, of course, and I knew that that would be the case. Um, you know, a lot of the tickets that I got that I was showing them was from years ago. So they really didn't, weren't, you know, we're a new team since the step down of parking enforcement, Jimmy Price, the chief, 
things have changed, we're more friendly uh, type organization, what have you. So when I was showing them older tickets, they, did, they weren't too impressed. And they're like, well, let's get to now. So I popped out a ticket that I got a couple a month ago. And the eyes kind of like lit up like, wow, well, he's got something new. So they looked at it and I explained the ticket to them and they felt also that it was uh, not issued properly. So they're going to look at that and get back to me on that. And uh, so, it, you know, like I said, all in all is all right, but you know, it's like, we got to see, because there's a lot of bureaucracy that goes on with big organizations obviously dealing with your government. And, you know, things, some things that I suggested, they said they were already working on. Uh, one thing they said was that they're taking out over a thousand parking meters and putting it back free parking, which is good. I mean, I want progress. I want change. As far as parking officers go and their conduct, they like uh, a thing that I said about officers being more friendly to the public and answering our questions about parking in a respectful manner. They like that. Um, I suggested to them, hey, don't bother us. You know, let us park in like uh, red zones as long as we're not blocking traffic. And I don't think that they really like that too much. But they said you can actually park in a red zone or pull over to drop someone on and off without getting a ticket, which is pretty much what I'm saying. Well. Like I said, overall and all, it's just, you know, we'll see what goes on because they suggested that I send them a lot of the red zones that I'm talking about, the exact location of those red zones, and they're going to review them and see, because they said at the time they're put, they're put in for a reason. Maybe the reason has changed over the months and years, so we need to look at the exact place and send someone out and then um, we can, you know, assess the, that red zone is not valid anymore and we can change it. So stuff like that is what we talked about. Uh, you know, so I didn't get to get through every single thing, but I think they got the logistics of what I was trying to say. Uh, my guys that are with me now, who came to support me, uh, said that they feel though that they wanted something more. They wanted a more, uh, I gave them an operation parking relief about 10 things that we need to change about parking cars and the parking officers and it seemed like they wanted something more like I don't know a more way to discipline their officers or something but you know my point is just to make them follow the law and that we might have to change that law and change things that are just not right because they have too many red zones too many meters and different things like that and you know we want to change that we want to make and give citizens, Angelinos, more free parking. And uh, so we'll see what happens and what becomes of this meeting, and uh, I'll keep you updated. Here are some of the heads that I met with with the Los Angeles Department of Transportation back on November 27, 2012. And when I think about it and reflect back on our meeting, I really think that a lot that what they were saying was just ridiculous. And I can't get into everything, obviously, you know, right here. But my point was to show them the corruption of the parking officers and why there's so many red zones and no parking areas. So what they suggested I do is contact the areas that decide the red zones and why they put them there because they said everything they do is for a reason. So I did that. And there were actually five areas of red zones and stuff that you saw in my film and we're going to go back and review over those and I'll explain to you what they said. And then one more got added as a friend of mine's got a ticket in that area. So Let's uh, go back and review, and I'll give you the answers that they gave me regarding why those areas are red zones and no parking areas. All right, guys, remember this part of my movie uh, where I showed you the Macy's shopping mall? Well, this is what they said. Whenever LAPD or Homeland Security instructs LA DOT to install parking prohibitions, those restrictions are installed and will not be removed unless LAPD and or Homeland Security indicates they are no longer needed. I believe that the restrictions were installed at Macy's following the Oklahoma City bombing as instructed by LAPD. I checked with the police department and you may wish to send a letter to LAPD counterterrorism section, Chief Michael Dowling. That section may or may not choose to discuss the matter with the management of the Macy's facility and they may or may not agree or disagree with the modification of the parking prohibitions. If someone at the level of captain or above from the LAPD office requests in writing for LA DOT Central District to modify the parking prohibitions, it may be possible. If agreed to, the work would be coordinated with the meter planning section as it is likely that parking meters would be restored. 
None of these records are available in the current RLATS, which converted to Paradox to Access in July 1999. So there you have it. It's because of quote unquote terrorism that they added that as a red zone. You remember this part of the movie where I told you that the roots were coming up so big that I felt that they couldn't dig to put the meters in? Well, that assumption was correct. This is what they said. After my investigation, the red zones on the east side of the New Hampshire Avenue between the driveway of 666 and 670 South New Hampshire seemed to be installed by the Hollywood Parking Enforcement. The roots of those trees located on the sidewalk make it difficult to install meters and also for passengers to step out of their vehicles. You can directly contact them for more information. See, exactly what I was saying that is because of those roots. But passengers or the drivers know that, that those roots are there so that they got to watch it when they get out, so just drop them off before. But as far as the driver, he or she can still get out. So it should just be given to us as free parking. And we shouldn't be harassed when we're sitting over there waiting to pick up our friends, loved ones, whatever, at those businesses. And that's what I've encountered. So just another thing that I'm showing and explaining to you as a problem. All right, now this is the LAX area where I showed you where all the free parking was. This is what they have to say about it. This office retained records for approximately 10 years. Most of the parking restrictions on 98th Street and on Vicksburg Avenue were installed many years ago, so records of the reasons for the installation are no longer available. Two-hour daytime plus tollway no stopping nighttime restrictions were installed in 2007 or 8 as a result of a petition signed by representatives of properties on the street. Many of the buildings with front or rear access to 98th Street in the LAX area are expensive or relatively expensive hotels. They are very concerned about safety and security for their clients and staff, so do not want vehicles to be parked for extended periods of time in their vicinity. Burglars or other criminals are very unlikely to park in on-site parking lots as there are security cameras. If there is nearby on-street parking, it becomes easier for criminal activity to take place. Obviously, parking lot owners prefer to have parked vehicles pay to park in their slots, but they have to convince representatives of other properties to sign in order to have time limit restrictions posted. They cannot arrange for the signs by themselves. So because of crime and they worry about that, they don't allow people to park for long in that area. All right, now you remember I talked about the uh, UPS complex and all the free parking that they've been taking away in the area by LA Live? Well, here's what they have to say. The parking restrictions was requested by LAPD due to trash and public nuisance in the area. Numerous complaints have been filed from business owners in the area to LAPD in regards to that. I know that LAPD informed us at the time that there was criminal activity taking place in the vicinity of UPS, specifically east of the facility, and they instructed LADOT to remove the parking in that area. It appears that the situation may have changed since then, so you may wish to send another email to request that they provide you with one or more petitions to change the restrictions on one or more specific blocks. Now, I remember talking to a parking enforcement officer there recently and he was telling me, yeah, it's because of the trash being dumped and people are stealing cars and, you know, dumping them there and the criminal activity going on. And I said, as far as the trash goes, that can be dealt with. It's trash. We can clean that up and the city can do which they were doing. As far as cars being stolen and dumped there, I didn't see any of that. And it's possible, but it wasn't any more, you know, out of control or bad than anywhere else. And as far as the criminal activity, what were you referring to? And he said he remembers seeing a couple having sex and afterwards threw out their dirty condom on the street. And I said, yeah, they shouldn't throw that condom on the street like that. But does this warrant criminal activity? And does that justify them taking away the free parking and hurting the rest of, you know, Angelinos for that? I don't think so. So I ask, what's the real issue or situation at hand here? All right, you remember this part here where I was showing you how the delivery trucks get tickets but the police and the mail trucks don't? Well, this is what Bruce Gilman said to me in our meeting. I asked him and I told him about this part of the movie and showed him and said, well, look, how come they get tickets? I was told that they have an exemption that they can get, but it's cheaper for them to pay the ticket than you know, for them to pay the exemption. He said, no, that's not true that they don't have an exemption, but it is cheaper for them to pay the ticket. And I don't know what he meant by that if there's no exemption. 
But at any rate, he said that they're working on a program for them to have some type of exemption so that they don't get so many tickets. As far as the police go, he said that they've told them to not park like that in the red zones, and you know, unless it's an emergency situation, of course. But they do it anyway, and he said, so what are we supposed to do, give them tickets? And I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> and he said, uh, as far as the mail trucks go, they are federal, and the federal government has it where you know they can park like that in order to deliver the mail. But like I said, I don't have a problem with it. I'm just saying, be fair, because they're not blocking traffic, and neither are the delivery trucks. So, anyway, supposedly they're trying to resolve that whole issue. As I end out my movie, I want to say this: there has to be a to be continued. Simply because there's just too many unresolved issues. I still need to meet with the police department, businesses, and try to figure out these petitions on how we can get our free parking back. In the meeting with the city, there were a lot of things that we discussed. And there's a few things that I want to you know, point out to you here. And one thing that kind of disturbed me or bothered me was that I found an article that said that parking officers have to, or they are required by law, to list the VIN number on a ticket. And in the meeting, Bruce said that that's not true, that you know parking officers can issue tickets without a VIN number. And I still feel that that leads to too much abuse of power, simply because the officers, if you get into an argument with them, they get mad, they write down your license plate number, send you a ticket in the mail, and say you drove off. And it's just not fair. And Bruce did say, however, they are trying to implement a system in where they videotape the person out of the car and then issue the ticket, therefore proving that you weren't in the car at the time. And I think that that's very good. I then asked them, why do you guys set the price of tickets so high? And Bruce said, it's not us. It's the mayor and the city council who decides the price of tickets. We don't care if tickets are $5 or $500. We just have a job to do. Well, I kind of find that statement to be a little disingenuous, simply because of course they have a vested interest in ticket prices being higher because that means they collect more revenue. So I don't really feel that statement is very truthful. And he then said that if people don't like the mayor and the city council's move to hire more parking officers and raising the price of tickets, then more than the 11% of voters who turned out for the 2012 elections need to show up and vote and voice their opinion. And I agree with that. It's true. I then said to them, Let's say for an example, in a one year period, that you normally collect like $140 million. But let's say for one year citizens and Angelinos don't get many tickets and you know feed the meter and so forth. So instead of you collecting $140 million, you only collect $40 million that year. What happens to this other $100 million that you were counting on getting? Bruce said if that were to occur, then they would have to raise the price of tickets even higher lay off people and cut back on projects because all the ticket money goes into the city's general fund and is used to help fund retirement, salaries, parks, fixing the streets, etc. So my point here is that what do we have? Sounds like nothing but a big cash cow bureaucracy. You have to keep feeding this cow in order to keep these things going that the city's doing. So it's we the people who suffer and it's we the people who are paying for all of this. And as I said before, I don't want to just give you, you know, problems and all the issues and whatever without any solutions. So coming up, I'm going to discuss with you how you properly fight a parking ticket in the city of Los Angeles. And we discussed this in the meeting, but they didn't properly or thoroughly explain the whole procedure to us which I just found out really recently and I want to share that with you in the next segment. Also too I have a quick statement, um, one more area that we talked about as far as uh, tickets and percentage of tickets. So I have that for you coming up in the next segment. Bruce Gilman gave me a statistic. He said that 40 percent of the tickets that citizens fight they win and that is a pretty good rate he felt. But I told him that it's not a good rate because it means that those people should never have gotten a ticket in the first place. And that if the tickets were issued properly, then the parking enforcement's win rate would be very high and the citizens' win rate should be very low, like 5 or 10%. So, how many people out there got tickets that they did not deserve and just paid them and did not fight? 
Maybe if they did, the citizens' win rate would go up to 60%. When you get a parking ticket in Los Angeles, the city gives you a chance to fight it without paying it first or appearing before a hearing examiner. It's called an administrator review. What you have to do if you feel that you got the ticket wrongly is take pictures or video and go to a parking payments location or mail in your pictures or video within the 21-day contesting period. They will review your case and notify you of their findings. I have to warn you that they probably will say that your ticket is valid after their review. If that happens, then you can have an administrative hearing where you have to appear in person and pay your fine amount before you appear or request a waiver of the citation payment. Please read your ticket because they do not tell you some of this stuff. If you do not understand something, call 866-561-9742 or go to the website at www.lacity-parking.org. Or you can do what I did and you can use what I use when I fight and that's called the Uniform Commercial Code, UCC 1-308. Alright guys, as I'm closing this movie out, I found something very interesting on the Parking Enforcement website. Right here, it says unclaimed refunds, new. So you click on that, and then you go to unclaimed refunds, and they've got refunds that are due back to citizens from 9-1-2007 to 8-31-2008. Amount, $56,564.23. And you click on this, a list, and all these names come up. These are all people who are due refunds. And then... You go back to the unclaimed and go back to, let's see here, unclaimed refunds, and then they have one for 9-1-2008 to 8-31-2009, and there's over $144,000 of money that they owe to Angelinos. Look at all this. So make sure you go and check this list. You might be on it. So, no one's talked about this. I just found this recently. So, And then lastly, I'm still fighting the city about my ticket that they gave me incorrectly. Today I went to my mailbox and in there was a letter because I've been fighting and telling them to dismiss the ticket under the UCC code. And this is what they sent to me. They said, this letter is in reply to your request for an administrative hearing for citation listed below. I never once requested or asked for an administrative hearing. I simply wrote on there my disclaimer and they're supposed to dismiss the ticket. Now, that $63 ticket has nearly tripled and they're trying to collect $175 for a $63 ticket. This is what I'm talking about, abuse. To the city of Los Angeles, you'll never collect this money from me, ever.